Hello again, my name is Rodney Reynolds and welcome to another video review. Today I'm looking at the ABIT IS7G motherboard. What is included in this package are an extra two USB 2 ports and two extra Firewire ports. This end goes installed on the case and this end goes plugged right into the motherboard. Now there are a number of cables included, a regular ATA133 cable, a floppy cable, two serial ATA cables and you also get power adapters for those serial ATA hard drives, an IO shield plate, some software, drivers, a manual, and the motherboard. This motherboard is based upon the Intel 865PE chipset and does support the Intel Pentium 4 800, 533, and 400 MHz CPUs with hyper-threading technology. Let me just go through some of the key features about this motherboard. Right here is where the Pentium 4 CPU gets installed. You can install single channel or dual channel memory on the board. Now there are uh, two different types of controllers really. There's serial ATA and the regular IDE controllers. The floppies right here, the regular IDE are right here. You have the Intel serial ATA controller right here and a silicon image one right here. And you can do RAID functionality on either one of those. Five PCI slots, one AGP slot, and by the way this AGP slot is either four times or eight times AGP. And this motherboard does have active cooling on the chipset. There are three fan headers, one right here, one right here, and one right here, and two power connections, one right here, and one right here. This motherboard does have regular PS2 connections for the keyboard and the mouse, regular COM port, and printer port. Optic in and optic out for the audio, and it does have six channel audio. There are four USB 2 ports right here, and one Firewire port, and remember, you can have two extra USB 2 ports and two extra Firewire ports if you use this. It also has onboard LAN. Within this BIOS there are many great features. First let me look at the soft menu setup. In here you can do an automatic setting for the CPU like I have selected here or you could do a manual setting and you can adjust the front side bus all the way up to 412 megahertz. Further down here you can adjust the memory ratio and this is a really neat feature if you're overclocking. For example, you can do a buy SPD option, let everything go automatically, or if you want more or less performance out of the memory, maybe your memory will go too high depending upon the front side bus you have selected. For example, if you have a front side bus of 250 megahertz, you select the top one here, 3, 2, that would equal 166 megahertz. If you select 5, 4, and you have a front side bus of 250, that would equal 200 megahertz. And of course, if you go one to one, that means that if you have a front side bus of 250, you're going to have a memory speed of 250. And thankfully, you can adjust the PCI as well as the AGP bus. You can do it automatically, or if that doesn't work for you, maybe you have the front side bus too high, you can go ahead and select one of the other options here, or you can have it fixed. I normally select fixed just to be safe and keep everything nice and stable. Further down here, you can select different voltages for the CPU, the memory, as well as the video card. The CPU goes all the way up to 1.9 volts. The memory goes all the way up to 2.8, and the video can go all the way up to 1.65. Within the advanced BIOS features is where you can go to enable or disable the virus warning, also enable or disable the hyper threading technology, and also adjust the first, second, third boot devices. Now if you're using the serial ATA controller, you'll need to go in here to the hard drive boot priority and select whichever one you are using. Within the advanced chipset features is where you can go to really adjust the memory. You can do a buy SPD option or you can do a manual option where you can go ahead and select all the different timings to get the maximum performance out of your memory. Within the integrated peripherals part of this BIOS is where you can go to enable or disable things like your onboard USB, your onboard audio, the RAID, etc. Now something interesting about this particular motherboard is that you have onboard serial ATA functionality. And you can see here at the bottom, you can enable that. You can actually have different priorities. You can have only serial ATA. You can have a combination of serial ATA as well as regular IDE drives. You can also select a RAID option, of course. This motherboard has two separate RAID controllers, one by Silicon Image and the other one by Intel. 
And finally, within the PC Health status part of the BIOS is where you can go to view the different temperatures, the fan speeds, and all of the different voltages. You can also set an alarm for the fan. You can shut down the system if that fan was to fail. You can also set a CPU shutdown temperature as well as a CPU warning temperature. The 3 d Mark 3 result is 6614. These are the settings used in the Comanche 4 demo, a screen resolution of 1280 by 1024 at 32 bit. I've checked texture compression, disabled V-Sync and hardware shaders are checked. And the result is 62.23 frames per second. These are the settings used in the Quake 3 Arena demo, a video mode of 1280 by 1024 at 32 bit. Geometric detail is at high, texture detail is at max, texture quality is 32 bit, and the texture filter is trilinear. And the result is 223.6 frames per second. I've used all the default settings in the XS Mark except for a screen resolution of 1280 by 1024 at 32 bit. And the result is 8769. The Unreal Tournament 2003 benchmark results at a screen resolution of 1280 by 960 are the flyby is 200 and the bot match is 86. The Sci Software Sandra CPU result is 10879. The Sci Software Multimedia result is 16,036. And the Sci Software Memory result is 6,033. The RAID results on the Silicon Image Controller were a little flaky. Sometimes it would get over 50,000, sometimes below 40,000. This result here is 41,449. Much better results on the Intel controller. This result is 52,642. This motherboard is stable and as the results show it's very very fast, it's affordable and has just about everything you'd ever need from a motherboard. Overall this product is kick-ass. Again, my name is Rodney Reynolds and this has been another video review. Be sure to check back very soon. I will have a brand new one for you then. Also pop into my website at www.3dgameman.com and while you're there, you can go into the forums and register. And remember, registration is completely free. Until the next time, take care. Yeah.